The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself of Lord unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The great verse of Ephesians 2.12 teaches the importance that there is no God apart from our Lord Yahweh, and there is no Savior apart from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this earth. Many of the people who do not read these passages of Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians and wants to come and raise debates, telling to the point this, that X, Y, Z trends under the trap being blinded by Satan can never really know who is the only Savior and who is the only true God. This great Lord God revealed for us through Israel Further, making it as a simple combination of the church. No difference between the Jews and the Greeks. No racial discrimination. Anyone who believes in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now he belongs to the church. Under this great grace period which our Lord has given to us, we need to be trained up to be as alakenikitesus, new spiritual spaces unto Christ under the great polity of privileges of all time. And many of the men who do not know, do not understand, do not realize, have come to the pulpits really to change the course of direction which is not at all in Christ. Dear brethren, this great truth, what we are dealing with, what we are going through, what we are learning with has a lot more to be done in the knowledge of Christ. If you could simply read with your eyes opened, you can never understand the scripture. Spiritual phenomena is for a believer and that too for a believer who is in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit and yielding unto the fruit of the Spirit. As Moses was rising in hands over the battle, they were Israelites prevailing over it. And when his hands were weary and they were coming down, the enemy started to win. A simple lesson of 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. To have a communication to look, that by the rebound we are being, we are being into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly, all the time. And we need to be there in this life on this earth as long as we live, battling constantly as such who is going to control your soul. Either it is the old sin nature or Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you as a believer do not know what is controlling you, you can never be known what is the enlightenment of the scripture. Or get into your mind what you have already learned in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as such to say what is right and what is wrong, as that man told discreetly to the Lord, saying that these are the two commandments, I need to keep them. And he said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Dear brethren, the things that we need to answer back, Lord, with a sound mind demands, the sound teacher, and there can never be any sound teacher apart from the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given for certain male believers while in this church age through the spiritual bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, never to a female, only to a male. His duty constantly being to inculcate the truth. No matter what it comes, no matter what it takes, no matter what it goes, his work is to constantly inculcate the truth, the truth and the truth alone from the original languages of the scriptures and furthermore take it into the concept of dispensations and to rightly divide the word of the Lord so that the people can understand living our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there is no God on this earth. So in Ephesians 2 12 it says, You are in a time apart or you are in a Cairo, in a season that you are apart from Christ. 
and having been alienated of the polity of privileges of the Israel, that is what we the Gentiles. Israel was been given this citizenship. But they failed because they were the first communicators of divine oraculars, but they lost it. They lost it because they failed to listen, though our Lord stands written in Jeremiah eleven three to tell to them, Cursed is the one who does not listen to these words of this covenant. The same thing applies to us. The only difference is they are rational species, but we are the spiritual species in Christ. The rational species have been taught like the beggarly elements kept under tutor to know what is the grace over the law. So that by keeping the rituals, by following the commandments, they should come back and look and understand what it was. But now in Christ, in church, we don't have those mandates. We have only the spiritual spaces, and the greatest one is every believer being a priest, and every believer being a king unto Christ, my Lord. In the privacy of your priesthood, you go and confess your sins, and you get back into fellowship. In the privacy of your kingship, you go and write at least once the Bible, preferably upon your knees, so that you should know and understand what it is to look each and every word under the mental ministry of God, get the Holy Spirit giving, being given for us, for our journey, for our polytema. But we don't do that. We have various reasons, because the codices says it is a kingdom, and someone says it is X, Y, Z. If there you are not a king, then why do you require crown? At least crown is there. And you have your own explanation on that as well. Because you want to escape from the root cause, which says, if you are a king in Deuteronomy 17, 18, you should write the law. And now if you are kings of that great, almighty, great, great Lord God Almighty, who has given for us in this church age, sanctified and kept apart for his work, and where is our kingship? If you are a king, have you at least written once the Bible? If not, though, kneeling. Why are you not able to understand the simple truth? When you read the Bible, Satan knows. When you are knowing the truth, you will set free. And Satan trembles when you take the word of the Lord. Far less when you will never really imagine and understand. When you start to kneel down and write the Bible, how much powerful you will become. Every word has to be imbibed. Every word has to be into your, the facet of each and every red blood cell corpuses of you. But we are not interested to look. Neither we are interested to taste and see how beautiful is my Lord. But you all want to look and see the things which have been told not to touch, not to indulge, not to taste, or not to come into contact. You want to look upon that but you don't want to look upon this which has been given for us to write at least once if you are a king for Christ. There are hardly 31,173 verses in the entire Bible. Every day if you can start writing at least five verses, you can finish it off by five to six years. But you are not interested to know that because you all are interested in your life. Battling against that country, battling against this country, Looking for approbation, lust, power, lust, trying to rule. Like the same failure in the theocratic kingdom, trying to rule in their own hands rather than looking upon the guidance of word. 1 John 5.14 teaches to us, anything if he can ask according to his will, he is going to do it. Then what is his will have we known so that you could get the things done according to the grace of God, which could be a permanent solution? Not the temporary. When you do not know being a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this will of God, how can you come to know who is the true God? How can you manifest in your life who is the true Lord? So it says in Ephesians 2.12, you are apart from Christ. That is what we the aliens. And we are aliens from the citizenship of the Israel. And we are not even the guests of the covenant of his promise. Therefore, you don't have any expectation. And therefore, you are without God in this world. If you have any expectation today, it is by Christ our Lord who removed the barrier between us and God. 
the insurmountable barrier was been removed. It has been replaced by the doctrines of justification, of redemption, propitiation, expiation, atonement, by the doctrine of rebirth. Now your position, what was in Adam, is no more considered your position in Christ, as we have covered in one of our earlier tapes. The six bricks are removed. The barrier, now it has been removed. Now you have an expectation, expectation of great glory in Jehovah, through Christ, the only Savior. But on the contrary, we have our enemy as well, constantly looking, and that is what we find we can find in Satan. Constantly looking, constantly trying, constantly digging, blinding the eyes of this world so that they should not know realization of the truth, the gospel that has been in Christ, demanding human sacrifices right from Kali till to the point of Baal and taking and considering to follow rituals, working out, giving under the target of religion to work out their own salvation, not in Christ, but from their own human energy and from their own silver and gold. But in Christ we have our salvation secured. For by grace you have been saved by faith, saith our Lord. It is not of your own work so that you should be boasting. Therefore, Christianity is never a religion. Many morons don't understand. In their moral agia, they think that Christianity is also a religion. But no, Christianity is a relationship with Lord God the Father by His only begotten Son who died for you and for me on the cross, that whosoever believes in Him shall never perish but have an everlasting life. And these things have been written for us so that by believing Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that the Son of God, you can have the eternal life. And we don't want to look, because we don't want to read. We don't want to prevail over the Amakalites, what it has been mentioned in Exodus 17, 6 and 9. They were not totally conquered. They were been defeated, that's it. Even the all in nature can never be conquered until and unless you go on to the heaven after your death. But there will be constant battle as such who is going to control your soul. And in order to know the enlightenment of the scriptures as we communicate for you, you have to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, defeating your old sin nature and conquering through the Holy Spirit. And that's why every believer is being made a priest. But we don't want to look upon those truths. We want to get at the most area of weakness, area of strength, Christian moral degeneracy and Christian immoral degeneracy. That is what our life looks. Get to the extreme end of poise by singing great songs so that your brain can come to the equilibrium of thoughts to understand what the preacher is standing there. But you can understand, but these are the seeds which follow the roadside. These are the seeds which have thorns and they do not grow up. These are the seeds which have been fallen on the hard rock but not on the fertile soil. To fall on the fertile soil, it demands the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that what you have learned, it will come back to your mind when the occasion arises to understand it. Dear brethren, how many days more you want to create your own gods? There is no God apart from my Lord, which is nothing but Jehovah, Yahweh of hosts. There is no Savior apart from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but now in Christ we have an expectation, the barrier being broken down. In the year 30 on the Calvary of the cross. And we don't want to look, because we believers don't want to know what it is. Through the mind of Christ, thinking, and some morons who have been raised their own institutions, they want to say, you not, you'll not be saved until the death of your point of life, that you have been living so great, so well, so nice. But the Bible says, once you believe, and the result continues forever in Acts 16.31. You have been saved in either all of the approaches, what we can note, the logical approach, the sovereign approach, the Greek tense approach, what we have noted in one of our tapes. Any approach you take, you have been saved and secured. The family approach, 
But then today they want to speculate. Have I been saved? Have I been saved? You have been saved, but you have now a great life to live, and that life is this unique spiritual life by getting down and passing down all the spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and then the spiritual maturity, and you don't want to look upon it as well because you are not interested to look. That is the great problem, dear brethren. When you have a desire to know the truth, Lord will let you know the truth. If you don't have a desire, Lord is not going to care because he's not interested to change evolution from negative to positive. If it were the case, then this angelic conflict wouldn't have been resulted and this human in answering to that angelic conflict would not have been made on this earth by the renovation in seven days of six days literally of the creation again. Dear brethren, know that there is only one Lord and one Lord is our Yahweh, our Lord, our God. My rock, my strength, my salvation. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who substituted for you a spiritual death on the cross, it is He who is our Savior all time. So, dear brethren, think over these issues as such, and we shall continue in the next tape. Father, grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that, Lord, get the Holy Spirit to learn us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.